I think the thing that gets me really excited about clay is it has survived centuries. There's like pieces of pottery, they can break and whatever, but they, they've already been through fire. I love knowing that my work will survive me. <laughs> I'm Sarah Beek and I'm the artist and owner of Beek Ceramics. I didn't start with clay until I think it was like my senior year and I did more sculpture. I had kind of like at that point realized that I was more of a craftsman than like a fine artist. Painting and some other mediums, like I always liked them, but there was always, I always looked like really restless. And when I started with clay, I remember being so like awed by the process. There were so many things going on that like I never got bored. In a lot of ways, I felt like with clay, it was like we were made for each other. Like there was just this sense of being, I could sit at the wheel and I could just throw and throw and there was just this motion that like I went through with each piece. It was this strange tie that I had between my like spirit and head and heart place and with my hands. And it, it felt as cheesy as it sounds, something kind of like a song. I think sometimes being a potter is maybe one of the more like humble art forms um, because I don't think we always have gotten recognized and I think that if my desire was to be known I wouldn't have become a potter. I live her experience and I live through other people's experiences and what I love is being able to hear other people's experiences with my work. I love hearing their stories, like, you know, and most people have that. They have some sort of like, oh, I gave my bowl to my grandmother who did it, you know, and that's so cool to me. I think I just wanted to continue to create something that's um, stays up to date and yet it's timeless. A lot of me has like really strived to tie the two aesthetically pleasing beautiful pieces that I would consider art but that can still be used and that can bring people together at a table and enjoy it just like a piece of art that was hanging on the wall. I do what I love and I do it for other people as much as I do it for myself. And if the other people aren't pleased with my work and it doesn't make them excited to use it in the morning or you know, with people, like, why do it? There's something about um, creating something and like imagining what it, what would be in that piece. And I have to have had this kind of strange obsession a little bit with um, pictures. I don't really know why. Things like that tend to get really overlooked. You know, when you sit and have breakfast, so often you just like get the milk jug out and you just kind of throw it on the table. It's like another sort of step. I like creating steps for things people are really like aware of. Putting the cream or the milk in the pitcher, taking it to the table, sitting down, holding it, because that has created a memory when someone reaches for something and it's like, oh, this is cool, and then they pour their milk. And it slows you down, you know, and makes you be able to like, be in that moment because we're always in a hurry. You know, I think there's some, something about ceramic wear that it slows you down. Like I want my work to slow us down. I see the ceramics becoming something really communal whether that's teaching classes or um, taking on an apprentice at some point or assistance. My mentor was mentored and she was mentored and I want to keep that alive. I put in a blessing to each piece because of the hands that will hold them or the people that will eat out of the bowl or whatever it is. 
I think by doing that, it has been really helpful for me to just, yeah, think about on a daily basis why I'm doing what I'm doing.